Hey guys, Chris here. Welcome back. Uh, this is episode three in my series, How to Refinish a Foam Warbird. In this episode, we're gonna cover preparing uh, the airframe for paint. So last time, we filled in all of the panel lines. We applied uh, multiple coats of polycrylic onto it as a varnish to seal it all in. And so now, what we're gonna do is primer it and get it ready for paint. We're gonna sand first it down a bit apply a couple coats of primer, we'll do a prime, sand, prime kind of approach, and then we'll let sand it down and she is ready for paint. In terms of primer, I'm using Evercoat uh, Automotive Primer. It's actually a lacquer-based primer, and believe it or not, it will not eat the foam. I tested it to make sure, and so it's really good stuff, and it's gonna help us get a good adhesion to this uh, acrylic finish. So one of the other things uh, to note is obviously we need to mask off the canopy and so to do that I'm using 3M fine line tape. That is excellent stuff. You burnish it down such that it kind of changes color when you do so and that really seals it and you can get really nice crisp paint lines using it. So that's going to protect the clear areas of the canopy for us and so we'll approach that first and then we'll start sanding it all down and then we can start primering it. So first time we're going to mask this off, I just want to show really quickly uh, just a couple ways that I do this. So the nice thing about this fine line tape is that, you know, you can apply it in straight lines, but you can also, uh, if you've got curved surfaces, you can kind of work it around to get these rounded edges. Now, if, if this particular width is not doing what we need to, you get multiple widths. I've used some 16th inch uh, wide here to go around this curve. Makes things real easy. So once we have put it down, we're going to use this little burnishing tool to uh, push it all down. And you can notice that it kind of changes color, and that means that it's all nicely sealed. And the other thing is to make sure you get clean corners, you got to go in and really Make sure you push down on, on these uh, overlapping parts too. And so what we'll do, now that that's all, all burnished down, I'll go in and we'll just cut all of the corners so we got nice clean uh, separations and it'll be ready to go. While we're doing this, we'll protect our landing gear as well. We'll, we'll extend the landing gear. We'll just put some paper towels in there so we don't get any paint on the wheels or the struts. Now with everything masked off, we masked off the canopy, we've also masked off these wingtip lights. Uh, we're just going to come through and we're going to, I'm going to use a small sanding block, I'm going to block sand the whole thing uh, as best I can. And that's going to even it all out and uh, before we, we primer it. And then we're going to do a couple iterations on the primer. Uh, we'll prime it, sand it, and then prime it. Uh, and that'll help even it all out also. And then it'll be ready to paint. Once we have this all primered, uh, we'll check back. I had planned for a beautiful music and time-lapse montage of the primer and sanding process and I set up my camera and got this epic picture of my shop wall. Don't! However, I did get this. have gone through, we have filled in all the panel lines, we've varnished over the entire airplane, we've done a process of sanding and primering. I did about four coats of primer. From here, I'm going to wet sand the entire airframe with 600 grit sandpaper and just create a nice smooth finish. And so then, from there, we can apply our paint. Let's get onto our wet sanding and then we can start painting this airplane. Now to wet sand this, we'll just touch on this really quickly. I've got my bowl of water and I've got my 600 grit. I'm gonna dip that in there and simply just wet sand this whole thing. We don't need to go too heavily with it. It's mostly just to smooth it out. It's a flat primer and so we want a smoother surface than that can offer uh, when we apply our paint. So we'll get better paint adhesion.
Now, in terms of the paint, I am using spray cans as well as Model Master enamels. And so these spray cans, this is Tamiya. These are the AS sprays, and it is excellent, excellent spray paint. Uh, you know, in the times that I want to do a quick and dirty paint job, this is my go-to. It sprays exceptionally well, and it, they've got a nice assortment of colors. So I'm going to be using the green on the top in the spray can, the silver, the Lady Alice P51 is a, uh, it's all painted silver, it's not actually a natural metal. And then uh, Insignia White. For the enamels, I'm going to be airbrushing. I've got <clears throat> yellow for the checkerboards on, on the nose. Also the red for the checkerboards, uh, and then I also got black and white. For the tape, I will be using, again, the fine line tape for the straight edges. Uh, and then to mask anything off, this is the extremely low tack stuff, the lowest tack you can get tape. The issue is, this is EPO, things don't always stick well to it. So we want to use as low tack as possible to minimize pulling up our finish. <laughs> sure how best to portray uh, the painting process I used here you know painting is is a very extensive subject and I can spend multiple tutorials covering just that subject and I do plan to go back and do that I'll you know cover the different mediums the different types of paints how we can apply the different methods in this case I thought what I would do is I would just talk to the process I used uh, and just go you know nose to tail on the airplane about what I did first of all the prep work is crucial to a good quality paint finish. So any imperfections that you see through the primer are gonna show through the paint. So spend the time in the preparation process to get yourself a nice smooth finish on the airframe. So once the surface is properly prepared, then you can apply your base coat. So in this case, I'm using the silver as the base coat. Uh, you know, generally speaking, as we paint, we wanna go from light colors to dark colors and silver is one of those colors that you know is a great base. We want to apply that first uh, so that all of our other lighter colors can be applied over it. Spray the silver first over the fuselage and the underside of the wings. With the spray cans, you want to use long, smooth strokes as you're applying the paint. You don't want to just hold it down and, and you know shake the can around to get coverage because you're going to end up with runs. Uh, so spray it in, in in kind of a cross hatch pattern so you can go longitudinally in one pass and you can go uh, crossways in the other path. From there I masked off around the nose of the airplane for the, the red and yellow checkerboards. So I masked that off using our 3M fine line tape, sprayed the whole area white. And from there I sprayed it all yellow. You know, to spray yellow, you need a white background because if you don't, it'll end up the wrong shade, wrong color. And then I masked off for the checkerboards. I used vinyl to do that. I have a vinyl cutter. I love it. Uh, you don't have to have a vinyl cutter. 
Uh, you can use, you know, paint mask material that you can get at, at an art supply store. Or you can just use the fine line tape and, and individually mask off those squares. You just want to make sure that you have a good seal so you don't have any bleed uh, through uh, when you paint it. Once I had the yellow mask off, sprayed the red, uh, and that area was complete. You can pull off all of the masking material. From there, while I was spraying the yellow uh, on the nose, I masked off and sprayed the rudder. Sprayed white first, and then applied the yellow. Once those areas were completed, I went on to the invasion stripes. Masked off the entire area for the invasion stripes on the bottom of the wings. Sprayed white over the area first, then masked off for the black areas. Sprayed the black, and then pulled it all up. While I was painting the white on the underside of the wings, I actually ran out of the white. So I ended up then going to the fuselage. And so again, using my fine line tape, masked off for the green, sprayed the green, uh, and then pulled it off. Once I had more white paint in hand, I masked and painted the invasion stripes on the fuselage. Same exact process as was done on the wings. From there, I went to the top of the wing. When I sprayed the white on the underside for the invasion stripes, I also sprayed white on the top side. There's a white stripe that's on the top of the wing. To prepare for spraying the green, I masked off that stripe and then masked all around and then I painted the, the green. The last item of business was to mask off the discolored area around the exhaust. That's actually the only natural metal uh, area that's on the Lady Alice that's not painted. So I used Alclad dark aluminum to do that. It's really good. It's a very durable paint. If you're looking for a really good metallic paint that really has a nice metallic sheen to it, uh, Alclad is the stuff you want to use. From there, it was a matter of applying the markings. Now, for me, I'm very particular about my markings. Uh, I want all the colors to match and I want them to look like they're painted on the airplane. You know, full size airplane, all those markings are painted. As I mentioned before, uh, I have a vinyl cutter and I utilize that along with uh, some water slide decals that I made. That's another tutorial I'll show you in the future as well, how to make your own decals. And so I'm using uh, laser decal paper to print the decals. For the stars and bars, I used actually a white vinyl backing. I painted it insignia white and then the decal of the star and bar was placed over that backing. Since I'm using laser decal paper, the issue is you can't print white. And so if you're placing a light decal over a dark color, that light decal is only gonna look darker than the darker color you're putting it over. It needs that light colored backing behind it to get the true hue of the color in the decal. All of the lettering, I just used the cut vinyl. I painted it to the color that I wanted. So, you know, I painted the black, uh, the small lettering on the back, I painted a metallic color, and then the numbering on, on the dorsal Again, I painted black and yellow. Lastly is the Lady Alice. I cut the lettering out with the vinyl cutter, sprayed it yellow, applied the yellow lettering onto the fuselage, and then from there, the water slide decal provides the red outline of the letter as well as the black shadow. So with all of the markings applied, I applied a clear coat over the entire airframe. I used a non-yellowing, a lacquer clear, you know, the, the Model Master stuff uh, that you use for plastic models, it's really good dull coat and it works really well. However, it yellows really quickly. The last thing to do was I added the chrome to the prop blades. And that was done using some Monocoat trim sheet, ironing it onto the prop blades themselves and trimming all the way around it. The, the chrome is obviously only on the front of the prop blades. And then the last thing I added were the exhaust stains on the, the sides of the fuselage. I only had black. I really wanted more of a brown color, but I didn't have anything available and I didn't want to run to the store, so I just used black. But the consistency, no matter what color you use, you want a really thinned out paint or almost to the consistency of dirty thinner. What that allows you to do is, is to make multiple passes. So 
that's it. We've got our finished Lady Alice. We're gonna take this thing to the field. We're gonna get a maiden on her and we will report back and let you know how it goes. If you have any questions, feel free to, to contact me in the comments or you can contact me through my blog, thercgeek.com. Uh, I'm here to help you if you wanna try this process. You know, the results are always worth it. Uh, as always, I have an article of what we did here on my blog, thercgeek.com. Uh, and I have, I'll have our next video up here. So be sure to subscribe to get that. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Brrrr.